sister who led us in worship, which was a very powerful one. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Sometimes they say envy is noble, but sometimes I envy some voices. <laughs> if I could sing like that. Please come for it so that you can read from the. I'm supposed to have brought a big TV, but the cut in my computer was kaput, so I couldn't link it up. That's why I've put the laptop here. Andy, please, Brother James, move forward so that you can read. We don't have much time. It's a very important point that God has been up my heart to share with you. And it's going to bless you. Amen. 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 The title of the message that God says I should bring you is Fear, Timidity, and Cowardice. Read it after me. Fear, Timidity, and Cowardice. I didn't hear you. Amen. Fear, timidity, and cowardice. Hallelujah. Amen. Most of us here are cowards. Most of us here are timid. Most of us here have certain kind of fears that will not help you at all. Why? Let me give a short background thing. We are now, Shaki is now 13, 14, we have 18, 19, 25 among us. Some of us are going to be business directors very soon. Amen. Others are going to be managers. Amen. Others are going to be, you can name them, secretaries and stuff. Amen. Others are going to be air hostess. Amen. But if you are timid, if you are a coward, certain things you will not get them. For example, an air hoster or an air hostess might be able to be swift enough to move with the people like that. <laughs> See what I'm saying? But you are so much of, of a timid spirit that your knee will be knocking against each other. <laughs> some of you might be serving at the hotels. You have, someone has ordered for um, whatever, drink. You have the tray on your fingers, walking to bring the item to the customer and you notice somebody's presence there, that gives you a timid feeling, and you all of a sudden you fall down. It happens, and it's not good. You know, church is a kind of school. If you come to church for several times, or you come to church, and your life does not change, then it's not good. Let's take it to academics. If your teacher teaches you everything and teach, and you don't change from what you don't know to what you have to know, it's a waste of time. Am I right? Yeah. That's how it is in church. So we are going to read a scripture from the Bible that we see what God gave you and what he did not give you. Amen. Amen. Are you here with me? Yes. Take your Bibles with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. 2 Timothy 1, 17. I want you to read from your own Bible. Today, no mobile phones, please. No mobile phones. If you do not bring a Bible, that's what the laptop here. But if you brought a Bible, I want you to open it and then you read together. Uh huh. Right, James? Can you stand up and read for us? On the screen. On the screen, please, because you didn't bring a Bible. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm reading from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. So for God has not given us the spirit of timidity, fear or made us timid, but of love and of power. And See, that's why I told you to move forward. Now I come here forward. Read again, please. Discipline. <laughs> uh, I'm reading once again. Um, 2 Timothy 1 7. I'm reading. For God has not given us the spirit of timidity, fear or made us timid, mm -hmm. but of love and of power. And of a sound mind, sound judgment, or self discipline. Amen. Amen. For God has not given us the spirit of timidity, fear, or made us timid, but He has given of love and of power of a sound mind, or self judgment, or self discipline. Imagine you are of age, you're supposed to be married, or you'll be married. You come across a lady that it's very attractive. Mm. Mm. The only thing you could do is she. <laughs> and she passes by. 
Genesis, the Bible says God removed one of the ribs of Adam and formed Eve. Eve. So, maybe your rib is the one passing by. But because of timidity, you couldn't even talk. Elvis says, please, can you stand up? <laughs> Imagine me seeing air hostess. My <laughs> sister. <laughs> Good morning. Please, how are you? I said, brother. I said, brother. Then I go. Next week, please keep standing. Hey, sister Alma, please, how are you? Greetings, eh? Bye bye. The next time, please, can I carry your bag for you? Please, say bye bye to your mama. You know you like her. It's not like you don't have the worst, <laughs> but cowardice is killing you. And she looked for by, oh, and once again, and she goes away. Then when you go home, she I'm supposed to have told her that I like her. Next week I'm gonna do it. I know where I'm gonna see her. Then you polish up, you go and stand at that corner. Ah, there she comes. <clears throat> Hello. Today I like your green dress. <laughs> That's all. And then Brian James, who is bold and of power. You see her say, wow. Mm. What was creation? Mm. Sister, if I look at your hair, if I the way you have naturalized the hair, it tells me that God has made you for me. Mm. <laughs> you see? And then, Brian James will engage in his break in conversation with the air hostess. And in no time, you hear the wedding. <laughs> and then, the brother who said, <laughs> You are crying. You are a coward. Not only that, even job applications. You study so hard, you get good grades. You saw the advertisement of the um, uh, uh, whatever newspaper, internet. You write, uh, maybe they'll call me for interview. Uh, what am I going to say? And then you skip the job for buying. Is your future has been wasted because of cowardice? So the Bible says God did not give us that spirit of fear. No, He didn't. If God did not give. Then who gave? You're going to learn. What is timidity at all? Timidity is an emotion experienced in anticipation of some specific fear. Fearfulness or fright or danger. In short, timid means lacking self-assurance. Maybe if I go and say and he doesn't like me, I will feel ashamed. E. Maybe I don't have the words enough to approach the air hostess. E. Maybe that job interview, my English grammar, if they say try, I will say try. <laughs> that self assurance is not there. So, what do you do? You let that job make it, and somebody else comes and. Why am I mixing the last in English now? That somebody from somewhere will come and they take the job from you. And you go to the prayer center, God, I need your help, I need your help. You pray until your head is paining you. God said, I just gave you a job. You want God to shout from heaven and say it's for you? No, it's your own timidity that is taking the good things away from you. Again, lack of bravery. You are not brave enough. I mean, there is no way I cannot stand. I always say, God, I thank you. Even the moment I pay my tithe, I say, well, I don't need anything back. Just give me the boldness to stand before public and speak. And when something comes out of my mouth, let someone's heart will see. That's all I need from God. When I went to our school reunion, there are about 3,500 students there. And these men of God, those uh, of us who are pastors and apostles with their clericals, we were expecting them to speak to them, to the students. 12 o'clock Saturday night, none of them turn up. I asked one of my uh, mates, 
They didn't show up. God have laid a heart, a message of my heart to talk to them. Hey, God, you, these people I said, yes, they are too many. I said, I don't care. And when I came back and I watched the video, I was amazed. Three, almost 4,000 students, a big hall. That's what power is like. You have the confidence that you can do it. Because the Bible says he made you in his image and likeness. Is God timid? No. Then why are we? Is God fearful? No. Then why are we? We should go away from that system. It will not help us. Okay. Amen. What is fear and how does it come? Fear is a distorted faith. When you say something is distorted, it is kaput. It just be mangled. You can't do anything with it. I know I can do it. But mm, I can't do it. Oh, I'm not sure. Good. How does it come? It comes as a result of information received. Where do you get the information from? Somebody told you something about something. Hey, yes, see. Yes, see. Yes, see. That yes, see, yes, see is the information you have received. You want to learn how to drive. Hey, yes, see, can you How does it happen? Hey, yes, see. If I don't track the couple well, hey, yes, see. Those information bring you fear. Amen. Amen. So the decisions that you make, you make the decisions as a result of the information you have received. You see this big man like that with big chest and a nice suit. The information is he's married. Don't go there. And you know you like this man, but the information is true. What do you do? You stay off. That fear man says stay away. It's a positive fear. There are different type of fear coming there. But there are some informations that they don't help. I know one uh, as they really call it ASAP, A S A V. I heard they don't like blacks. That's what you heard. It's information. But Christmas is coming. You need money. That that uh, as they really call it um, ASAP. Now here in Bengi, as they really how do they call it? I know as they bureau. It's a uh, interim. Ah, uh, interim. Thank you. This interim is the only place that they can offer you the job you need to get that money quick. But because you have heard the information that they don't like blacks, you go and walk past the uh, Azemiro door interim. Hello, have you this for mine? That's it, the information. So you decide even not to enter. So the information we receive cause us to make decisions. Amen. Amen. Teaching good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Check this out. The presence of something of someone can intimidate you. Luke chapter 3 verse 14. Once upon a time, some soldiers came to Jesus and said, Jesus, you are spoken now. Now what should we do? Jesus said to them, and we, what shall we do? And he said to them, do not intimidate anyone. Look at the word intimidate. What do you see inside it? Look closely. Intimidate. The yellow color. What does it say? That's timid. Somebody's presence can intimidate you to be timid. There are some boys in this house, when they come, they want to dance. But the presence of a lady here intimidates them to be timid. Oh, yes. My God. And even when they are clapping, <laughs> when you go out to your party, that time, because it's dark, you don't see the person's presence, so you can assault him around. But when you come to church, because, or maybe because of my presence, you are timid, you don't dance, feel free, oh, me, I'll dance with you. You understand? So the word intimidate, even is inside there. Don't let anything or somebody's presence cause you to be timid. No. Eho says it's fine. God shaped her nice. But don't let that one intimidate you. Otherwise, you become timid. Tibo, buto. No. It should rather ginger you. You understand what I'm saying? Ginger you. When you see the shape in the church, mm, wow, 
It must attract you. Say attract. Attract. Not to intimidate. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Teaching good? Yes. There are some people when I'm driving with them in the car, they see police people behind me. Eh, eh, can you take over? Take over what? <laughs> Drive. The presence of the police is causing them to be timid and they will be pressing on the wrong pedals. <laughs> yes. As those who don't have papers, eh? when they see police car passing by, how do they feel? <laughs> their heart beats and their working style changes. <laughs> Why? The presence of the police is giving them that kind of timid feeling and it's not good. God did not give us that spirit. Amen. 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 Let's move on. Now, the next one is, when God called us of the world, we became Christian. The Bible says when somebody is in Christ, he is what? New uh -huh. You are new. But you still have that old information in your hard disk. So the more we preach to you, we are replacing that old information with what? New information. Sister Angela, please come and sit here. So that whatever caused you to be afraid, you don't have that anymore. Why? God said in Isaiah 40, 41, 10, he said, do not fear, I am with you. When you read the New King James Version, there are 52 various scriptures that assures you not to be afraid. And I call it once a week. There are how many weeks in a year? 52. Every day, every week, God says, don't be afraid. Do not fear. Why? He knows what fear can do. Are you with me? Yes. Good. So, when God calls you and you come to church, what he's trying to, what he's doing is, he want to reformat your hard disk. So that all those bad information you have and misconceptions you have, you will drop them for a better one. So if you come to church and your life does not change, then try harder and pray. Amen. Amen. Now, let's move on. How does fear come? Like I said, information. Where do you get your information from? From your friends? From your parents? From your social media, from TV, from where? In school. But when you get those information, save them and get the best information that will boost you ahead. Amen. But the worst information you should receive is from who? Which guy? Satan. From who? Satan. He will always give you a contradicting information, and that will cause you to fear. Amen. Amen. What is the origin of timidity and fear? Where does it originally come from? We can see from 2 Timothy 1 7, where we just read that God does not give us. So who give? Satan give you that fear. So when you see the air hostess, you want to approach it and say, Hey, can you buy the hair he's wearing? And you will say, Yes. God said he made that girl out of my ribs with his mind. Then you counteract what you are hearing with God's word. Amen. And in no time, the elbow stress is going to be -na 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 with you. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Amen. Not only that, some positions that you're supposed to acquire in life always counteract those negative information with God's positive information. Again, in Paul's uh, to uh, Timothy, he was in prison. So Timothy was afraid that there was no mentor for him. So Paul wrote him a letter and said, Timothy, stir up the gift in you. Stir it up. You are a pastor. You are an evangelist. You are an elder. You are a deacon. You are a PRWC member. Stir up the gift in you when we lay our hands on you. So that letter came to ginger up Timothy that he could move the church forward. Today is like us. When Timothy heard information that Paul was in prison, he nearly dropped his faith. What do you do when you get information? 
It will cause you to be afraid of something or timid or to be a coward. Do you know that people who are coward cannot go to heaven? We are rich there. Sometimes we call you here. Come and stand here and then do even open prayer. I cannot. I cannot. Not because you cannot. You can. But you are what? A coward. You are timid. Move it. Get out from your chair. Why am I saying that? Very soon you become a manager from any from the growth of the drive. You're supposed to stand and do presentation to people, to new customers. You learn from, from right here. Right here. We are not even 30. And if you cannot stand before 30 people, how can you stand before a group? You pray to God for certain days. Because even if I give to you, you can't even speak. If you're speaking to one single girl air hostess, you are bouncing your fingers. <laughs> but you are studying hard to become a manager. You get it and you cannot find it. God won't God is a, that's why the Bible says he said, just go. So we practice all these things from here. My call to the service is not only to be limited to one local. The whole nation, I mean, I can go to every local to go and do my work there. So a time will come, you not see me like every day. I'll be going. Then when I go, present is not here. You. Or you. Unless you are going. Or you. Unless you are me, I'm going. Oh, I'm proud. Amen. So most of the gift and the talent that God has given us, we are hiding them as a result of fear. Eric can sing. He is not dumb that no, he has voice. Try. Even if I want your voice, bring it out. There are ways to overcome these things. When you had a man that you want to come and testify or sing, stand before the mirror. Use your tandem bustle. And you sing to yourself in the mirror. You tell, yes, I can sing to them going and saying, yes, let's go to church. Why am I doing that? Because God did not give me the spirit of fear and I'm not timid. Even if comfort will laugh at me and the AC will shout at me and preside will say, eh, 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 I'll sing. Amen. Amen. We have to overcome this kind of trap. We have to overcome it. Otherwise, we cannot attain better positions in life. No. And your end of the day, you study hard at school and you find yourself with the interim going here two nights here, one night there, two days. What is that? <laughs> That's not life. All because we can't get out of that thing and move forward. Amen. Amen. Are you offended? No. Okay, let's move on. Good. Lesson from Nelson Mandela. He said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear. Courage is not the absence of fear, but to triumph over it. Fear is there. I know if I go, air hostel will tell me that. I know when I go to the interim, they will say, you are black. I don't care. But I'll try for it. I'll go there anyway. And air hostess, please, how old are you? Uh, you know, Bible says we should not fornicate, but I mean, I like you. Uh, you know, go straight to the point. Air <laughs> hostess say, oh, brother, because you have this kind of courage, I like men who are courageous. Me too, I would like you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, an example there. Uh, you see what? Maybe she too. Samuel, are you there? Maybe when she too is in the house, he's also thinking about you. So he's waiting for you to come and hit the nail, the, the hammer on top of the nail. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, this? Sorry, yeah. I like you so much. So Nelson Mandela says that the brave man is not the one who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. I had the fear of speaking before people, but I said no. When I was in British, I used to stand before my classmates and write on a, on a blackboard. I teach them maths and English sometimes. I started from there. So why not? Not now. Yeah, but here is a change. So, so what? So what I practice those days. That has brought me now. I can understand before thousands and speak. It must begin from somewhere. And I say, here. So if you don't help you right now to learn from all those things, a time will come you will not have leaders anymore. 
We need people to make announcement. Sister, uh, what is she? Oh. Yeah. She will stand here and see the thing. But sometimes, you see, you want to get up, finish the sentence, quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Am I lying? We call it a quality in speech. You need to get the, the words tomorrow, you are meeting at 6 30. After that, you go to Pastor's house. <laughs> it's good. It's alright. She's doing her best. But if that kind of feeling is not there, she'll take her time. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, we'll be meeting right here. Please, will you come? If you, can you invite somebody to come? It will be fun. You know, I like that she'll be elaborating on that announcement. You will love it. You will not miss it. By this time, tomorrow at 6 o'clock, we come. But then go to What's up, Paige? What's up, Paige? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, she can spend some time and say it. But because of that feeling, it is going to go away. Hallelujah. Amen. There are different kinds of um, fears. <laughs> when somebody is crossing the road, what does he do? He look left and right before he cross. It's normal, right? He's afraid of being hit by the car. It's a good fear. The fear of death is there. The fear of the devil is also there. Most of the time, you hear people saying, the rich, he's a rich. Even when somebody gives you food, you don't want to eat. Why? Because the person is a rich. <laughs> we have a fear of failure. I'm going to do exams. I am nervous. He made them going to fail. That one alone will fail you. We have a fear of defeat. You are going to do something that will bring you, end of the day, a better position, but you are afraid to try. Why? Because you feel, if, yeah, I'll be defeated, so I'll, I better don't try. You have already been defeated. <laughs> we have a fear of disgrace. We say, sister, you are going to give the word next week. Hey, presiding me. I cannot go. Hey, God, no, please go. <laughs> As if you are going to hang you. <laughs> Because he's, the person is afraid that he will be disgraced when things don't go well. Am I right? Mm. Last time, Sister Pep, our phone went. Wow, it's not on my phone. I have to upload it to our page, the YouTube, this thing. And the time I listened it in my car, I said, Wow, this is what I mean by that. He got the courage to come for it. He didn't put the word fear in front of her, but rather at the back of her. So when God says don't fear, he means all these kind of fears. Why? Because he is with you. Amen. Amen. How to overcome fear? How to overcome fear? We learn that fear comes as a result of the information we have received. The information gets right here on our minds. So what do you do if you want to overcome fear? The first thing to do is to change your mindset. Amen. That's why when Jesus came, his public statement, the first thing he said is repent. Repent means change your mind, change your thinking. Your thinking faculty must be upgraded. Everyone has different mindset based on his background. We all have. I'm not disputing that fact. We come to church in order to replace that kind of mindset with God's mindset. Amen. But you came to church since 20th Yokohama, 19th of Yokohama. We are now in 2017. Those ideologies, that is still what you still hold on to. Why? Because you think that when you sit beside uh, air hostess, you will be, what? No. Feel free. Change your mindset. Change your mindset. Change also the source of your information. Who do you speak to? Who give you ideas? In the Garden of Eden, and uh, Eve spoke to somebody there. She spoke to Satan. And immediately, her mindset was changed, and she grabbed the forbidden fruit and she ate it. Where are you getting information from? Change your mindset. Amen. Change your source of information. Amen. Two, you must have spiritual mindset. Spiritual mindset means get God's word in your hard disk. So that when you are confronted with a situation that will bring you fear, immediately you say, ah, God has said this. 
Three, if you could think of the spirit, we can overcome fear. Always think in the spirit, in your head. Whilst you are going, you are approaching the lady, you are going for the job interview, God said, a hand that does not work should you eat. Therefore, other ASAP, light, black, or white, me, I'm coming there. Amen. And because your mindset has been tuned spiritually, you go there, and sit before that lady, they cannot get a cup of coffee, they do your fingers like this. <laughs> Did you go in for a job or you went in for coffee? You went for a job, but you want coffee in addition. You say, oh, wow, uh, coffee, okay, it's good. Make a sack at the bar, yeah, Alice at the bar. Alice, I'm taking Alice. That shows your determination and the capacity to move forward in the job. Amen. And after two sips, what job do you have for me? Oh, if I can again. Now you are going to tell her to work for you. You shouldn't give her the room and say we don't have job. You, they have job, but then what? They should close. Is that not right? So if you have spiritual mindset, you always quote God's word in your own self to your own self. You overcome fear. Again, as a Christian, when we find ourselves in difficult situations, we apply the word of God to counteract what we have always been doing. But somebody is here. The moment you close from here, Bible dict. You will never open the Bible anymore. Sunday. Until Sunday. I can say that every one of you has uh, Bible apps on your phone. Everyone. But how many times do you read it? How many times? Those are the things that will help you to change your mindset. We call something anticipation. When you go to the doctor, the doctor says, when I check your laboratory report, it's like you have whatever disease. Hey, doctor. Doctor says I'm sick of us. Hey, doctor. Angela will call you, sister, how are you doing? Hey? Doctor says I'm sick of this. <laughs> hey, 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 doctor, doctor. What is that? Is it that this is when they say you have it, you can't walk on walk hack again. So <laughs> the name and the pronunciation of that sickness alone <laughs> cause you fear. And then, sister, take your time and tell me. Hey, the doctor says deep type of the smash disease. I can't work on my whole hack. So, what am I going to do with all these shoes I have? it. <laughs> and at a point in time, all my cows will be very small and slip. You are describing fear. And that fear is going to kill you. Not the disease, eh? Not the sickness itself, eh? It is the, the anticipation of it. Amen. May God help us. Let's move on. How to overcome them? We have talked about it. We know where they came from. Now, we are going to take the medication. Say medication. medication. If you are a boy here and you are so much shy, you can't even look people in the eye. You have a problem. As a man, have that boldness to look somebody in the eye. What's that, bro? <laughs> You see, the moment I look into your eye, I say, they begin to feel that. Uh -huh. You have to repulse it to the person you want to meet. You meet Angela. Hi, Angie. What's up? How are you doing? Long time no see. Look at my eyes. You can't look at my eyes. If you were a man, look into the eye of a person you are speaking to. And that person is going to melt. Yeah. yeah, it's true, eh? Now, see this. There are two ways to go by this. The first one is by relaxing. You have to relax yourself. I'm going to speak to... This was your name? Lina. Lily. Lily. I've seen you the first time in our church. You are a stranger to me, I'm a stranger to you, I don't know you anywhere. And most of the times... Hello. Speaking to strangers is always difficult for most of us. The first thing to do is to relax. Hi sister, how are you? Because you are calm within yourself, you take a bold step. But if you are troubled from within, sister, how are you? What is your name? You'll be missing your words. When you go to the uh, interim, uh, instead of saying, how are you? Say, where are you? Oh 
Let's go deeper into it. Relaxing means understanding God's love better. That one you understand will calm you down. Situations are tough. But because you know God's love is better than what you are facing, you'll be relaxing. Cool. Two, trust that God will support you when you take the first step in faith. That's why last time I said, when they ask you, you are going to preach here. Don't say, no, I cannot. No. Say, yes, thank you, thank God. That's the first step you are taking. The moment you take the first step, God will push you the rest along. But for us, Brother James, you give it the word of God next week. Hey, presiding, give it to uh, 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 Samuel. Samuel say, oh, pass it on to Shaki. Shaki will say, pass it on to Abed Nego. Abed Nego. And <laughs> <laughs> the day we are having football commentary. No. Take the first bold step. Teaching good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Tell me, receive God's love and power. He's the one who will give you the power. We read from Timothy just now. He did not give a spirit of fear and timidity, but of sound mind and of power. The moment you will take the first step, God give me the power to move ahead. He give it to you. Amen. 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 All right. Lastly, understand this: that Christ in you, Christ in you is. If you are in Christ, and Christ is in you, you come and perform what He has given you to do. And everybody will have a talk of a town about you. Hey, that guy. I never knew he could give a word. Wow. The way he articulated his words and ah, it melted me down. Damn. They are talking about you. They are giving God the glory. That's the glory. Last time, my sister Pep gave it the word. All of you were surprised, Abby. Yeah. yeah. And I played a video in my car. Hey, you see your sister. I say, I love this, my sister. The way he talks. Hey, when they are coming to me, I say, come, come, come and listen to more. The glory is now coming. But come and uh, I have to fast and pray for one year before. <laughs> the next step to overcome timidity is by action. Say action. 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 <laughs> Taking action part is this one. Respond when there is an opportunity to exercise your faith. When we say, sister, can you lead us in a worship next week? Respond, yes, I can. Even though you cannot say, yes, I can. That's the action you are taking. You respond positively to it. Take risks by trusting that God will meet you when you step out in faith, acknowledge your fear, its origins, and repent of it. Trust that God will never let you come and stand here and follow your words. You tell the congregation to open to Jeremiah or Genesis, you will start from you will start from Revelation towards this side. Trust God will help you. Amen. When you go home, you, you begin to work on it. The last point is stir up the gift when you expect to see miracles. Every one of you has something unique. Everyone. So stir them up. Stir them up. There's this guy called David. David and Goliath, sorry, we have heard it too long and too many times. But when he stood there, that giant was defying Israel. He said, who is he? I'll fight him. Amen. He took the first step of faith. He did not let the sight of Goliath overshadow him. No, he did not. Immediately, he acknowledged God's supremacy over that guy. Hmm? If you are a believer, you don't accept God's supremacy and his greatness. How can you move on? David also demonstrates a willingness to go into the battle himself. You yourself take, take the initiative. President, please, do you have somebody for um, prayer for the church service Sunday? Oh, I don't have any. Please, can you put me there? Mm. You are taking the initiative. Nobody will do it because they are afia. Intimidate. <laughs> <laughs> nobody go. No, nobody went and. And brought this guy, David, from the, uh, the, this place to come and fight. He took the initiative. And today, you will remember him everywhere. Take initiative, take the step. Again, he defends his right to fight for the king, declaring God will give him the victory. You must also declare that you can do it. Amen. We can do it, people. We can do it. Amen. Let me move on because of time. 
Um, the moral lesson we can learn from David is this. We can learn from David that opportunities arise when you are in service. There are opportunities here in this church that most of you are overlooking. Residing say we're going to study in the UK. I have to move from church to church. Somebody must be here. It's an opportunity. And recommendation will be made. Uh, don't give it to uh, Shaki. Shaki, he likes coming to church too late. No, don't give it. What about Sister Angela? That one come to church once in bloom when he feels like it. Uh, let's try her. Yeah, but he can't speak well. Let's try her. I do. Oh, let's try her. I'm talking about you. <laughs> By the time you realize, you are on top there. Amen. Amen. Result, this is the last part. Result of timidity, fear, and cowardice. Open your own Bible. Especially those with NIV. Open it. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Rakob, you have your Bible? Show it to me. You don't have your Bible? What do you have there? Phone? Then come and read this one for us. Come, come, please come. You speak English, Abby? Yeah, come. Since you don't have your Bible with you, I have one here for you. Rabbi, come, come, come. No mobile phone, so. Uh -huh. I see Gisela is open from Genesis. Are you Gisela? No. You are? Benedict. Benedict. Okay. Betsy. Betsy. Oh. Where is baby Makati? She didn't come. Oh, okay. Can you read from where you are standing? Please come for it. Come. No, pass this way. You see, that's what I'm talking about too. Move it, man. Uh -huh. Keep quiet. He is reading. Uh -huh. Go for it. Go for it. Say, I can do it. Uh -huh. Sure, you can do it. Let's listen up. He's reading from Revelation 21 verse 8. Can you see from there? Uh -huh. Let's hear him. Revelation um, 21 verse 8. Uh -huh. But the cowardness and cowardness and unbeliever. Uh -huh. Vice and murders and sexual immorality. Uh -huh. You see, you are suffering. You can't read. Come forward. They will not eat you. Do you eat people? No. Are you gonna eat him? We eat prayer. We eat prayer. <laughs> God be come forward. Come forward. Nobody will eat you. Uh -huh. Overcome it. Overcome it. You can do it. Good man. Now you can stand there and read it. Um, Revelation 21. 21. Verse 8. 8. Uh -huh. by, the and by the cowards. Take it one by one. Take it one by one. Imagine you are proposing to again. Take it one by one. Uh -huh. Let's see. <laughs> you see that? You see that? You don't have it. Let's laugh for him. Let's laugh for him. Let's laugh for him. You see? all have it. And I beg you, Kobe, take a step. You can do it, right? Because yeah. right now, if I want some five or six people in my new company, people who are fluent, I'm going to look for them and pay them good. Then you miss a chance. So start from somewhere, bro. It will help you. Okay? God bless you. Uh, who did he bring his Bible? Lawrence. 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 You have Lawrence here? Yeah. Lawrence. Yeah. Oh, please. Right, uh, rise up and read for us. We have only five minutes to go. It's the last part. Pay attention whilst Brother Lawrence reads Revelation 21 verse 8. Revelation 21 verse 8. Mm -hmm. By the cowards, unbelievers, vile, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, or idolaters, and all liars, their share will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for him. When you read your own Bible, it is there. Do you think only people who still will not go to heaven? No. Do you think people who cheat on their wives, they are the only one who will not go to heaven? No. Do you think having sex and not being married is open? No. Not all that. But the first word was that what? Cowards. It's not good to be a coward, bro. It's not good, sister. Be bold. Come out. The Bible says, but cowards, he can't cower with unbelievers, those who don't believe God is even there. 
the vials, the murderers who, who kill. So if I shoot somebody and kill him and take all his belongings, run away. But you do everything good in the house of God, you come to church every day, but you are a coward. And a day, me and you, we are going to the same destination. See how bad it is, eh? It's very bad. He didn't end there. And idolaters and all liars. People can lie, oh. Come to church on Friday, I'll be working. You know you are lying. For the last six, for the TV, but after beginning. <laughs> and when the other asks you, you can look at me. Me, oh. Nice. I'm a presider, not a presider, bra. Me. Me, it's more a liar, like, hey, hey. And then, like, you lie to me in my face. I'm going to let me while you lie. Mm -hmm. End of the day, you and the coward, the timid, the terrible person, we are all going to burn in the fair. I didn't say it. Did I write it? No. It's God's word. So, first Timothy is telling us that God did not give us the spirit of fear and timidity to be cowards, but to be bold. Today, I challenge each one of you in the name of Jesus that as you take a step of faith, come out of those old ideas, drop the old information, change your mindset, and be bold. Be courageous, and God will exalt you higher in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, amen. You are going to pray to God. You are going to pray to God and thank Him that He has given you this assurance of faith. And then ask Him again to give you the spirit of boldness. Then we close. Close your eyes and begin to pray for yourself. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you this morning for what you have given us. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us a secret that you couldn't buy with money.